If you're looking for someone to change your life, change your life, I can be the one that can change your life. If you're looking for someone who can change your life. What is up, y'all? I'm Naya back with the Naya News. And today's video, from the title, you can tell it is going to be five tips. Yes, I said five on how to pick an ideal roommate because maybe we all in college well you know you might be going to college or you might just trying to get an apartment in your hometown and you might have to live with somebody so we want that experience to be as great as possible because you want your living situation to be comfortable you know what i'm saying everybody wants their home to be a safe place for themselves so we're going to get right to these five tips just to ensure that you like where you stay and who you stay with. All right. Number one, my first tip is going to be to make sure that this might sound like a little silly, but make sure that you all have similar sleeping patterns. Me and my roommate work simply because we're both deep sleepers, right? So like little stuff does not disturb us. So she might come in in the middle of the night. I'm not going to wake up. She might come in now. She already knows like, you know, I might not want her to turn the light on and stuff because that would probably wake me up. But like she's making a little noise and she gets in the shower. She's getting herself together. I'm going to stay asleep. So I would advise that you stay with somebody who you know you wouldn't disturb their sleep or you would know um, y'all on the same page with that. I have friends who are light sleepers and I know I couldn't stay with them because I wouldn't feel I wouldn't want to feel responsible with me. Like I might come in at 10 and you already sleep and I'm making a slight move and then all of a sudden like, you know, you wake up. I don't want to feel I don't want to feel responsible for that. So I would say try to get somebody who's on the same sleeping pattern as you and uh, sleep similarly to you similarly to you. So like like y'all both deep sleepers or y'all both light sleepers so you know y'all both on the same page when it comes to sleep because baby we all need our sleep and nobody wants their sleep to be disturbed all right two would be to get to know the person and ask situational questions or just ask them in general like how often do you clean this part of your room how often do you clean your bathroom how how clean do you like the room to be you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying because one person's clean may not be another person's clean one one person's messy might be another person's trifling so you need to know what page they're on when it comes to cleanliness or like how they like um the function of their room or the function of where they live you know some people like may like to play music all day i know some people in this dorm they love playing music all day i'm not one of those type of people and i might not want to hear music all day so you need to hear and you need to know like how do people work i'm a person i can work around noise some people cannot you know so just knowing like what is the feng shui or what is the flow of the room just making sure that's the person who you can flow with daily me and both me and my roommate we know we can both work with noise but we know we're both neither, neither one of us is loud like you know what i'm saying we might play music during the day but it's never too much it's always just enough but just knowing like you know there might be two people out here who like playing music all day there might be two people out here who like it to be completely silent so just making sure you're asking questions and getting to know the way that person likes to live before you start living with them so ask those those questions don't be afraid that person should not bite y'all want to be comfortable you have to ask and i'm not saying the person is going to be completely truthful because people may say one thing just because it sound good and do another but you at least want to know where their head is at you know what i'm saying even when it's just in regards to like simple things like how do you do your work in the room um what do you do in the room like you know just little stuff like that or uh you know, how often they clean, just stuff like that. You want to know it before you get in. Or what bothers them? Do they mind you having company? That type of stuff. So just knowing, ask those questions. My third tip for you is going to be that you make sure you get a long time. Now, okay, this is going to be definitely different for people who are moving into an apartment with someone where they're going to be in two separate rooms. But for my college students that are looking for a roommate where you're going to be bed to bed, like you can see in my background, you are going to need a long time. Alone time is so essential. You are going to want to have time where all you have to look at is you or all you have to be with is you and just, a, you know what I'm saying? Just soaking in that. So I would just make sure that your schedules do conflict. If that makes sense. I want like when I'm here, you like, you know what I'm saying? You want time to work when you're in the room, she's gone or when you're in the room, he's gone. You know what I'm saying? So y'all balancing it out or when they're in the room, you gone. 
You know what I'm saying? So you want your schedules to conflict with each other. You want them to be like, okay, she's here, that, she's here at that time, and I'm here at this time. You know what I'm saying? I love my roommate to death. We love talking to each other and stuff. We love each other's presence, but it's also that time that we know we need a long time. So it's great when I know when I'm in class, she's not in class. When she's in class, I'm not in class. You know what I'm saying? So we're both getting time to that room. So I would say have those conversations about each other's schedule beforehand. If you know you're going to be in a room where there is no separation, where y'all are just looking at each other, you need that time alone. So make sure you having those discussions to where you're ensuring that time alone. Because even you may meet somebody where y'all do have very similar schedules, but just making sure that they're not going to be that homebody in the room all the time you know what i'm saying just making sure that you can get some type of a long time on a daily basis you know on a daily my fourth tip would be to be careful with your friends you know what i'm saying i've heard different opinions on this you know what i'm saying some people say it works out with their best friend some people say it works out with their associates i'm not sure i can't say completely you know, I don't want to say yay or nay because it's definitely situational and it depends on the people. But be careful with room with your friends. And I say this in the aspect of you don't want to get tired of people. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing for somebody to be your friend and y'all hanging out all day. But y'all sleeping and waking up to each other is a whole different level. So just make sure it's going to be a person you want to do that with. And you know what I'm saying? I know some people out there got them some tummy people in their life. And you might not want to wake up to that em energy. So be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself and be honest with your friends on whether y'all could really, really, really live together. You know, you need space from people. So, um, and I'm not saying there's not other ways to get space, but, you know, living together is a big step. So I would just say very much so. You need to be careful when it comes to room with your friends. Just be careful. Evaluate the situation. Think on it heavy. And just assess the situation to make sure that's a situation that you want to be in. All right. All right. All right. And five, I would just say this, especially to my incoming college freshmen. Your roommate does not have to be your friend. He or she does not have to be your friend. Let's make that abundantly clear. Do I love my roommate? Yes. Has she became one of my friends? Yes. However, they don't have to be your friend. You all can just be cordial. So you don't have to look like when you're going through that um, assessment of like whether like, oh, she should be my roommate or not. It doesn't have to be somebody you want to be cool with. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody you want to hang out with. Y'all just have to be able to be cordial. Being cordial is essential. And that's pretty much all you need is to be able to be cordial, be able to live live to well, live with one another, be able to be nice and be able to communicate with one another when things are needed or things need to be fixed. But other than that, y'all do not have to be friends. So I don't want you to come into college thinking this is like a whole movie situation where you come in and you just have to meet your best friend in your room. It doesn't have to work like that. Now, for some people, does it work like that? It does. It does. You know what I'm saying? You can really get close with a person from living with them. But if it doesn't happen, don't trip. Please don't trip. It is okay to just keep it cordial. It is okay to have a nice living situation with somebody who you just cool with. It's okay. It's okay. As long as y'all just cool. We stay in the flow. Y'all cool. It's peaceful. That's all we need. That's all we need is the peace. That's all we need is the peace so you can be able to feel safe and want to come in your room. And those are my five tips. I hope that they are helpful to you all. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you can keep up with the Naya news on them. You know, on them. And that's on period, poo. So I will see y'all in my next video. And I love you all. Have a great week. We could never die. No, you